All right. Everybody. All right, all right, all right. <clears throat> well, if it's going to be, it's up to me to fulfill my dreams and possibilities with dedication and motivation to inspire thousands from all nations. When times are tough and breaks you down, just smile with toughness and rebuild from the ground. During tough times, adversity is a lot. Just remember, time flies, but you are the pilot. Ow! What's going on, folks? What's going on? Hope you guys are doing great. This is supposedly be our Monday Motivational Power Talk, but we have to do it tonight on a Thursday night. I'm your host, Jay Hunter Lee. Thank you guys for stopping through. Hey, we're going to have a conversation that we're going to have tonight. I hope you guys are ready. <clears throat> Listen, as I say with everything that I post, speak on, what have you, controversial or not, chew the meat, spit out the bone. Chew the meat, spit out the bones. There's going to be some things I'm going to say that people don't agree with. But here's what I do know. I'm not going to speak of anything that I just pull out my ass. <laughs> That's for sure. Tons of researching and studying and reading that I've done, you know, at, and, and one, if you guys can see the topic, what's killing the black culture? We're going to deep dive into this. We're going to have this conversation tonight. People aren't going to like it. And I'm going to tell you who are not going to like it. The people who are not going to like some things that I'm going to say is going to be the people who don't want to hold themselves accountable. So you guys always know when I speak, whether I'm on stage, whether I'm on the podcast here or in my quotes in the morning my, or whatever I'm speaking of, I always start with self-accountability. That is where everything starts. Self-accountability. So we're going to get into it. But first, let me tell you guys why I've been away for three weeks. <laughs> you guys know I got stuff going on. I'm trying to do business stuff, you know, looking after a lot of, you know, some other things and stuff like that. So about two weeks ago, I had pink eye. I'm not going to get up, get up here in front of you guys with one of my eyes looking all out of shape and crazy and red. It's pink looking. Got cold coming all out the eye. It, you guys know I'm not going to come up to you looking crazy, okay? I don't come to you on my podcast looking crazy, and when I'm out in the public, I don't look crazy, right? So I'm very, very conscientious about my appearance. So you guys know that. Look at me right now. I'm always, a, I, I even have a fit if I'm on my podcast and I forget my, uh, my, my pocket square or my handkerchief, my hanky. So what I normally do if I don't have a hanky, I put it on pause and say, hold on, folks, I'll come back. I'll be right back. Go get my hanky, bring my hanky back in. And I'm like, OK, I'm on point now. And I say that because I've been to a cyber security, a couple of cyber security. And this is not a knock on anybody. It's not a knock on anybody. Let me get my earphones out of my ear. It's not a, this is not a knock on anybody. But men, we need to start dressing up again. We need to start dressing up again. Start dressing for the job you want, not the job you have. See, I'm a little old school. Coming up in my day, they starting out with IT back in the 90s, folks. I'm telling you, every time I went to work, I'm suited and booted. Every time I'm at work, suited and booted. To me, when you're suited and booted, that means to me, that means that you are of service. And when you are of service, you have to look as if you are of service. When you go to a nice high level restaurant, the service do not come to you in jeans. Go to any restaurant where you're going to spend at least $50 for a plate. 
that service is not going to come to you with no jeans, no raggedy shirt or anything like that. That service is going to come. That service is going to come to you suited and booted. They might not have a full suit on, but they're going to have something that's very profession, professional and presentable that fits the atmosphere that you just walked into. You guys understand what I'm saying here? Let me adjust this a little bit. You guys understand what I'm saying here? So with that in respect, you now ladies, you typically do dress for service. You typically do dress to impress when you're in the workplace or wherever you're doing it when you're providing a service. Ladies typically still do that. Men, we're falling off. We kind of fell back. Fellas, put the suits back on. Put the neckties back on. And put a handkerchief in your damn suit. It says a whole lot. I look at ESPN, I look at news anchors, and a lot of these guys don't have, even have their handkerchief on. And I can see other anchors may have theirs on, and they look significantly more distinct, more sophisticated than the other anchors without the handkerchief. That handkerchief speaks volumes in your suit, guys. And I hope you guys can hear me. I got my new microphone. You guys, what you think of my new microphone? Let me move it up a little bit more. What you guys think of my new microphone? I got my microphone, folks. I'm, 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 I'm in the game now, folks. I'm in the game. I want to give a shout out to my queen, Quintina Lee, known to me as Tink. I gave her that name. So listen, folks. My juice today. Thank you, thank you. Tink says sounds great. My drink for today is a, it's called Splash Tropical Blend. Splash Tropical Blend. It tastes real good. It's low in carbs, low in uh, uh, sugar and all that good stuff. Got it from Aldi's. Folks, I'm telling you, Aldi's has been my place. I be getting a lot of stuff from out of Aldi. Let me get, let me move my Bluetooth because I don't need it right now. I've been getting some stuff out of Aldi's, man. I'm telling y'all, you, sleeping on Aldi's. A lot of folks that have got a lot of money, you won't find, you will find them in Aldi's. You will find them in Aldi's, and you will find them at the farmers market. Get your meats from the farmers market, folks. I'm trying to tell you, you, this right here is some good juice right here. Delicious, guys. I'm really, I'm really glad you came in, though. Uh, I do want to have a conversation. I don't know who else is on. I see some people coming in. I want to give a shout out to those who are watching right now via Twitch. You can also follow me on Twitch at twitch.com or download the app Twitch and do a search for J Hunter Lee. Okay. Um, also, those watching on YouTube, shout out to you guys as well. YouTube, you can follow me as on YouTube as J Hunter Lee. You can follow my whole entire uh, uh, channel there. All my videos are there. You can look at pre-recorded videos, previous live videos. All of that is right there on YouTube. You can go back and look at all of that good stuff. Uh, <clears throat> also, I want to give a shout out to those who are watching on my business page. J Hunter Lee business page. That page is worldwide. I have over thirteen thousand followers on that page internationally. I mean, you can just, just about name just about any country, people over there follow, right? There's the UK, Belize, Fiji, uh, uh, Tanzania, <laughs> Ghana, uh, Gambia, uh, up Northern Africa regions like Morocco, Egypt, uh, Sudan. <laughs> I got followers all over the place on that page. Um, so give a shout out to those. I know you guys are probably asleep by now or waking up in the morning over, in, over across seas, across the Atlantic Ocean, or you, you might be waking up. So uh, I think you guys are six, seven hours ahead of me here in the East Coast of the United States, down here in the good sunshine state of Florida. I love Florida, folks. Um, shout out to those guys. And also shout out to people in my group. Tampa Bay Friends and Events group. Uh, um, let me let me really real quick tap into that group, uh, Friends and Events group. 
a few weeks ago, we had a little bit of a uh, um, altercation between myself and a few of the members of that group. <clears throat> um, I had mentioned about a man not allowing himself to be emasculated. Now, <clears throat> I'm gonna give I'm gonna give a little bit of this was I'm gonna admit that it was a little bit of not knowing on my part that when you mentioned emasculate in, in a man being emasculated, I did not know that people from the LGBTQ community will relate that to a man being in the LGBTQ community. So apparently to them, it would seem like I will make mockery of someone who is gay. That's not what I'm doing whatsoever. Never in a thousand years would I ever make mockery of anyone in that community. Okay. Um, I have people, I have people who are gay in my family, male and female. I still love them. I still love humanity. I love humanity. My love is for humanity, not a particular group. You guys understand what I'm saying? I don't care if you with this part of this group, you with the Hebrew, Hebrew Israelites, the Jews, or the gays here, or the Muslims over there, the Christians are over there. <clears throat> Listen, folks, to me, all that is called group consciousness. And it's all driven by ego. My love is not for this group or that group, that group. My love is for all of them. It's called humanity. It's called being a human. But I also, but I'm also not a fan of. I mean, I'm also a fan and believe that everybody deserves equal rights. But I'm not a fan of people who are trying to get special rights. There is a difference. So if I say something about um, against a man being emasculated, I'm speaking from a point of view of a manhood or a man standing up for himself or a man saying that, hey, <clears throat> get your own shit. Stop living off women. That is where I'm coming from when I say stop being emasculated. Don't move, move into a woman's house because she's the, she's the boss. She wears the pants. You guys understand what I'm saying? So. When I speak to that, that is where I'm coming from. Not in a, not in a, I'm not coming in the sense of a man being homosexual. That is 100% his business. And he has the right to be that. And I would never, ever try to take that away from anybody. So I hope those of you in my Tampa Bay Friends and the Events group is now clear on that. I really hope you are clear on that. Because if I make any type of post like similar to that in the future, Hopefully you remember this video with me explaining where I'm coming from so that you wouldn't be offended by that. Okay? <clears throat> I am sensitive to people's feelings. I might be sensitive to it, but the truth isn't. So how the truth come out is just how the truth is going to come out. I hope you guys can I hope you guys see it, what I'm saying. I hope you guys get that. So folks, what I want to do is have a conversation with you guys about what's killing black culture. <clears throat> we all see what happened with Ye, formerly known as Kanye West. We now see what's happening with Kyrie Irving of the Brooklyn Nets. The same things happened been happening to the likes of Minister Louis Farrakhan for over decades. Same thing. You speak against the Jewish community and they attack you for it. They own all the platforms. Whether it's Hollywood, whether it's the rap game, the media, they, 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 they own it all. Applaud them. Have nothing to do Nothing against any of that. But as long as you're talking about gangster rappers, shooting this nigga in the ground, calling out queens bitches, guess what happens? They monetize that. They make billions and billions of dollars off of it. They don't sell it to other Jews. They don't sell it to white people. They sell it back to you, black people. They sell it back to you. <clears throat> Am I upset about 
the fact that they're doing this, no, I'm not upset that they're doing this. They're doing whatever they need to do to feed their fine, their families. Just like the average corner store in, in a black community are owned by people who don't look like you, probably like, like Asians or, or, or Ethiopian or what have you. I'm not mad at them. They took advantage of opportunities that we would not take advantage of. Now, we can blame, oh, well, we can't get blunt, blunt loans. And all. We can't, folks, we, we got to stop creating something that is bogus like this, right? We got to stop blaming the white man for our lack thereof in this age. And the reason why I say this, folks, is because we have, we now have over 35,000 black millionaires. We have about close to 10 billion black billionaires. Some of the money in the team and stuff like that, but let's take, let's just say about five black billionaires who got their billions without entertainment or without a ball in their hands, shooting it or throwing it. We have a Kiko Davis, the first black woman to own her own bank. Michael Roberts owns one of the hotels he was segregated against. He could not walk into because he was black. He now owns one of those hotels. Robert E. Smith, black billionaire, is in software and technology. He, he sold one of his softwares for like over a billion dollars. He's a gentleman who paid for everybody who graduated from Morgan University. He, he paid for all of their uh, uh, student loans, paid all of it off when they graduated. This happened about three, about three, four years ago. How these great black men were able to accomplish this if the white man is holding you back. Okay. Several black people don't want to hear this because several black people don't want to step out there on their own, step out, make the quantum leap and bust their ass to get to where they want to get to. <clears throat> Watch this. <clears throat> Let's talk about what's killing the black culture. First of all, what is the black culture? What is the black culture? What is it? <clears throat> it's hard to kill something, folks, when it has a strong root. Are you guys familiar with uh, the Karate Kid when they had the bonsai tree? He said the tree will always stand strong because it has a strong root. Let me put you guys on hold for one second. Hold on. All right, folks, well, I heard, I can hear myself talking on my TV around the corner because I'm up on my YouTube. I'm, I'm live on my YouTube as well, so my screen is is up, my TV, so I heard myself. I wanted to turn that volume down because I didn't want no feedback coming in. <clears throat> so you got to have strong root. If your roots are not strong, if the root of the tree is not strong, that tree will not, it will, it will be easily be killed. Easily be killed. One of the strongest trees that I know of is the, is the oak tree. That tree is so strong, the root of the tree will eventually grow out underneath a house and cause that house to be lopsided. That root will cause that, the floors in that house to rise up. 
because you never know which way that root goes. That oak tree is very, very strong. I've seen oak trees lift up sidewalks. Sidewalks. You guys have seen it. I'm not a fan of oak tree. If I, you know, <clears throat> buying property, I don't want oak trees on my property. Because guess what? They're protected. You can't cut them down. The city won't, if we, depending on where you live, the city will not allow you to cut down the oak tree. I don't want that shit on my property. Oak trees are a headache. Right? But here it is, folks. <clears throat> the fact that we don't, as black people, we don't exploit our roots. The culture that we claim we have doesn't have any roots. That's why it's getting killed. Folks, I'm going to answer the question right now before I go further. What's killing black culture? It's black culture. What we are experiencing is self-inflicted. What we are doing to ourselves we're not allowed to do it to any other ethnic group around the world. We degrade ourselves. We kill ourselves. And as long as we doing this shit to ourselves, other groups, other ethnic groups or whatever, race or what have you, monetize off of it. You want me to prove it? Let's look at the white folks. When you see white folks in movies, when you see white folks in, or, or in music or videos, what do they exploit most of their culture? Success, riding on yachts, right? Riding nice cars, living in, good, with a, in a good family home. Black folks, what do we exploit the most? We exploit, we exploit the worst part of us. And we think that is the coolest shit ever. We exploit hood, murders, bodies laying on the street. We dancing in, in, the, in the camera with guns. That's what's killing black culture. Do you see white folks on TV? Talk about 305, 305 trailer park. They don't give a shit about the damn trailer park. If that's that trailer park to them is, is like the lowest of the lowest for them. They don't advertise that. Why is black folks advertising the lowest of the lowest for us? You don't see white folks come on 312 trailer park. To the parking house. You don't see that shit. But we yell out every goddamn hood name we know. So the Jewish community or whoever owns the record labels or what have you, they say, okay, this is what you like. Come on in here so I can make billions of dollars off of this shit. Because they take it and they sell it back to you. So why is black culture killing black culture? Is it because we just all our dumb as fuck? Or do we just don't care? We'll throw Kanye, we'll throw Ye under the bus just because we disagree with something he said about George Floyd or about the slavery being a choice. If you really study the history, whether even the Dahomey tribe, the tribe that they trying to say that was heroes with, with the, one, the movie Woman King, if you study all of this shit, you will see that blacks have owned slaves for thousands of years. They've owned black slaves. They've owned white slaves. They, they've owned slaves for thousands of years. 
Thousands. Blacks, we have owned slaves more than any other group on the planet. We are pioneers in slave and trade, folks. That's study it. Study there are books out there to help you understand this shit. So we talk about slavery as a choice. He's not talking about 400 years ago. He's talking about thousands of years ago. And because we disagree, we throw the man under the bus. Listen, folks. I've seen some interviews of some Jews in regards to what he said. And you know what they said? <clears throat> they said, well, that's not every Jew. It's not every Jew. And because they say it's not every Jew, they didn't exploit and throw their own Jewish brothers under the bus either in public. They did it in private. They did it in private because they know they have the same vision. They have the same common cause for something. So they go in private and say, hey, let's be careful about how we are exploiting people. Whatever it is they do, I'm not saying that they're doing that, but I'm telling you, I'm not saying that they're saying this, but I'm telling you, if they don't agree, they don't agree in public is what I'm saying. They disagree in private. You don't see Jews all over Facebook talking shit about other Jews. They're doing it in private. But you see black folks disagreeing with other black folks all over Facebook. Talking shit about each other on Facebook, calling each other names, giving each throwing low blows at each other. And guess what? They monetizing this. And as long as we continue to be this way, they will, they will continue to monetize this. I'm just sitting here wondering as, as a whole as black folk, when will we wake the fuck up? I mean, you niggas are terrible. Nobody killing black culture but black culture. You don't see Ethiopians dancing around in front of a camera. Exploiting the worst part of their of their of their uh, 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 environment, they want to show you the best of them. I go to an Indian restaurant. Order me some chicken tikka masala. They have little videos, music videos of themselves, and they always around the Taj Mahal, places like that, showing you the beautiful places. They don't show you the, the lowest of the lowest in Bangalore or in New Delhi. <clears throat> they don't show you that. Every ethnic group that I've seen on TV or doing anything, they're exploiting the best of them. Black folks, we on TV, we show, we exploit the worst of us. Do you think a record label will say, well, you know, we can't put out your stuff because you're degrading your own people. Do you think they're going to say that? <clears throat> how we are with each other people is exactly how people will, re will, will, will be with us around the world. I've had people come up to me you know, trying to make conversation and want to start talking hood talk. I'm like, dude, every black man you see don't talk that way. I say every black man you see ain't hood. Talk to me like you have some dignity about yourself. If you want my respect, you're going to have to give respect. Don't assume because I'm black that I want to talk to you about murders and shit in the hood. I don't associate myself with that. And you can claim me to be Uncle Tom. You can say, oh, he must think you did. I don't give a fuck what the hell you say. But I am not going to attach myself um, or associate myself to the worst of the worst. I, just, I am not doing that. If you want to do that, you go right ahead. But don't get mad and talk shit because everybody get mad, get paid off of it but you. 
Because that's the funny part about it. You exploiting your worst, your worst environment. Everybody get paid off of that, and you ain't making jack shit. And this get this is what kills me. You got all these folks on it, these little degree people on all, all, all this edu you know, I got all this education and this. you ain't you 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 acting like the same of you just like the rest of the niggas. You acting just like them. Just like them. Throwing your own people under the bus. On a Jewish platform. Mark Zuckerberg Jewish. You throw your own, good God almighty, you throw your own people under the bus on a Jewish platform. Woo. This is what happened. This is the mindset you develop when you allow the mainstream media to educate you. You allow the mainstream media to dictate how you're supposed to live. You a lot of you Negroes still running around here with face diapers on your face. You're doing it to yourself. To your goddamn self. And you're expecting it to get better because you want other ethnic groups to make it better for you. They don't owe you a damn thing. You keep voting for the same people that you think is going to give you this. <clears throat> These same people you keep voting for and keep telling you that you're oppressed. But vote for them. And you voted for them, but they're the same ones. They're the actual ones that's oppressing you. They are the actual ones oppressing you. <laughs> Lord Evers. <laughs> We're beyond prayer at this point. It's no hope, folks. It's no hope. You have to take the kids and train them up to teach them right. And let you old motherfuckers set in your ways, let y'all go on and die somewhere, folks. I mean, as harsh as that might sound, that's a reality. Because you're set in your ways. You can't change now. <clears throat> you can't change now. Y'all have a problem just tagging somebody and exposing how well they're doing in business or in any other thing that they're doing. Y'all have a problem with that. If it's not in your family, Sometimes it ain't even in your family that you're willing to do it. You're allowing <clears throat> these politicians to divert your mind into thinking of racism. Folks, this is no longer a racial war. This is a gender war. This is a war between the male and the female. And if you don't believe me, <clears throat> look at your average post on Facebook. Look at how many of the black women degrading black men and black women degrading black men degrading black women. <clears throat> I mean, they are degrading each other so bad. I mean, I'm talking about low blows. Why are the black people the only ones behaving this way? It's because black culture is killing black culture. You don't see white women posting how what type of man you should have, and a, a white man gonna give you a, a man a man, but do this for you. Man, you don't see white women. I got all kind of people on my on my timeline. You don't see white folks posting that bullshit. We the only group of people that's posting side chicks and real niggas. We doing it to ourselves, people. To our goddamn selves. And guess what happens? <clears throat> they come up with these little black movies exploiting the exact same shit that we <laughs> are degrading ourselves about. <clears throat> so 
Same thing. I don't see no comments. Am I, have I struck a nerve? Yeah, anybody pissed? Is that why you ain't commenting? Anybody, did I piss you off yet? <clears throat> the truth will set you free. But it'll piss you off first. <clears throat> Nobody's willing to say, okay, but yay, we don't agree with you. But let's go in private and let's have a conversation. Let's go in private and let's have a conversation. We don't agree with you, but let's have a conversation. Let's see. Show us where you're getting this information. Maybe it's us. Maybe we're in uninformed. Because if you think about it, folks, you're disagreeing with what he said. And I'm not sticking up for yay. I'm just telling you facts here. You are disagreeing with what he said based off of what public school taught you. Not what you've learned on your own. <clears throat> what public school have taught you. Folks, first of all, you got to understand something. History is taught by the victors. Let me repeat that. History is being taught by the victors, not the victims. There are books, there are documentaries out there, there are documentation out there where you can learn from the victims. Find that information. Anything they tell you in the media. Research the opposition. See what really makes sense. Research the opposition. You just hear, see, you guys hear one side. <clears throat> you hear one side. And then when you hear the other side, you drag them through the mud. And then again, you drag them through the mud without researching what they say. Don't research what you've already been taught. Research what you haven't been, what you haven't learned yet. See, the problem is a lot of people are afraid the truth would challenge their beliefs. That's what a lot of people are afraid of. They rather live in a belief rather than live in truth. That's killing black culture. That is killing black culture. <clears throat> if Adidas claims that Kanye had breached their agreement or or uh, spoke against their policy, then why would they risk $250 million or lose 40% of their revenue to break ties with him instead of taking him to court about this breach and recoup what they've lost? when they cut ties with They're now trying to bring back shoes that they had, retro shoes that they had endorsed with Kobe Bryant to try to make up that revenue loss. I know that's what it is. They're trying to make up what they've lost when they cut with Kanye. Now they're trying to bring back some shoes from Kobe Bryant's shoes when Kobe Bryant was with Adidas. Back, back when Kobe Bryant had the little, the little small afro. And guess what's going to happen? You Negroes don't even realize. You Negroes don't realize. Brother Eddie Norris says, the lack of appreciation for black culture by black people has killed black culture. Bingo. 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 <clears throat> See, folks, you know what we do? We don't uplift the Michael Roberts, Robert Smiths of the world. We don't uplift them. We uplift other people who want to exploit 
our worst environment. You never see white folks bragging about the trailer park. They brag about corporate, how they built corporate America, how they're thriving in being CEOs. When we do talk about CEOs, we always got to bring up the fucking hood. Leave that shit alone, people. Leave the hood fucking shit alone, just like white folks are leaving, leaving the damn trailer parks alone. Like I said earlier, you don't see them talking about, hey, 312 trailer park. You don't see them doing no shit like that. <clears throat> Y'all mad at me yet? Y'all angry with me yet? Y'all ready to delete me? Y'all want to cancel me now? Huh? You want to cancel me now? <clears throat> because facts doesn't give a shit about your feelings. Facts does not give a shit about your feelings. I might give a shit about it. I'm not in the business of, of hurting your feelings. I'm in the business of telling you the damn truth. And the truth doesn't care about your feelings. I ain't saying. I'm just saying. <clears throat> Kyrie Irving just gets suspended by his team. Brooklyn Nets for five games. And he has a meeting next week with Commissioner Silver of the and the, uh, the commissioner of the NBA next week. Now they hammer him. They said that he posted something anti-Semitic. See, this is the Jew will tell you anytime you say something against them or, or hold them, hold them to something, they say it's anti-Semitic because they don't want to be held accountable. So what he does, he posted something that Alex Jones said years ago about a documentary. They, they're punishing him for a documentary that he posted. That he posted. But they won't say shit to Jeff Bezos because Jeff Bezos owns the platform the documentary is on. Jeff Bezos owns the documentary that he's on. That the, the documentary is, <coughs> is on. Why they won't fuck with Jeff Bezos? Why they won't, why they won't go to <coughs> Jeff Bezos and say, hey, that's anti-Semitic. We don't want you to post this or put this on your Amazon platform. Why they won't go to him? You know why? Because <laughs> Jeff Bezos is one of the richest men in the world. He contributes to a lot of these politicians' uh, campaigns. He actually owns the Washington Post. Washington Post is a Democratic-ran newspaper. It's one-sided. It's biased for Democrats. And not only that, he is now one of the people who could be possibly he, one of the people who could possibly be, be buying the Washington Commanders because now it is said that Dan, the current owner, Dan Snyder, <clears throat> who owns the Washington Commanders, is exploring the idea of selling the team. Jeff Bezos is looking to buy the team and be partnered, possibly partnered with Jay-Z. Jay-Z is already partnered with the NFL, so that's already a conflict of interest right there. Jay-Z also owns like 1% of the New York Nets, I mean the, the, the Brooklyn Nets, and they some shit. So what type of winning culture do you think is going to happen? Do you think because Dan Snyder's gone, the team's going to start winning, the team's going to continue to start losing? Because they're bringing politics to football. They're bringing politics to the Washington Commanders. The Washington Commanders is going to look like a left-wing football team. That's exactly what it's going to look like, a left-wing football team. And then you're going to have players who was not buying into that. The team is not going to succeed because they can't leave politics out of it. <clears throat> the same thing happening with the Nets in, 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 
in the, in, the, in the NBA. You got players like Kyrie. You think Kyrie Irving is the only one that they're having a problem with right now? They're going to have a problem with several NBA players. Because people believe in free speech. They believe in the right to, to say what they like to say. Long as long as not hating or hate. They're trying to, con they're trying to call certain things hate speech. So that gives them the right to punish you by saying what you feel. And you Negroes don't even pay attention to that. Woo! <clears throat> so folks, I challenge you. Start picking up some books. Start reading some goddamn books, man. Turn the TV off. If you're not watching something like a little movie or, <clears throat> or a documentary, turn it off. Turn it off. It's killing your inspiration. It's not allowing you to grow. People think they're growing, but they're only growing in a bubble. You're growing in a fish tank. You're not growing in the ocean. There's a difference. You're offended by what I said, be offended. Because all I, all I said was the truth. All I said was the truth. We're killing ourselves. We're yelling Black Lives Matter, <clears throat> but only Black Lives Matter when a white cop kills us. But Black Lives Matter don't matter when we kill each other. That's killing our culture. What did Black Lives Matter do? 80, 80 to 90 million dollars in donations. They take over 8 million of that and donate it to transgender organizations. What the fuck does that have to do with black people? Murder. Co-founder buying mansions and shit. Buying mansions. <clears throat> Got butlers and shit answering the doors and shit like that. Y'all running around, come on, Black Lives Matter. I laugh to keep from crying. I laugh to keep from crying. Throwing parties, just like throwing parties in their <coughs> throwing parties in their mansion. <laughs> And you Negroes out here throwing Kanye under the bus. Really? You throwing Kanye under the bus for coming out, speaking out, whether you agree with him or not, for speaking out, speaking his mind. But you ain't saying shit about an organization that don't give a shit about you. You don't say nothing, <clears throat> and you, I'm gonna tell you why you won't say nothing against Black Lives Matter for what they've done. <clears throat> because you hate to go against your own narrative when the truth comes out. People hate the truth, folks. You hate the truth because it challenges your belief. Just like Ting said, we're too eager to throw each other under the bus. We are so eager to throw each other under the bus. That's exactly what we do. That's been black culture. That's black culture. <clears throat> I ain't saying. I'm just saying. You offended? Be offended. But let you you let the fact that you offended make you do something about it. Make a change. Change your thinking. Get rid of the stinking thinking. You know why? Because stinking thinking will bring a stinking attitude. A stinking attitude will bring stinking health. And a stinking health will ultimately lead 
to a stinking death. Mad at me yet? I know y'all mad. Somebody got to be mad. Who's mad? Come on, who's mad? Who ready to cuss me out? Who ready to do uh, delete me? Give a shit about you deleting me? I got over 5,000 friends on Facebook. Close to 14,000 followers on my other Facebook page. Over 1,000 followers on YouTube. Over 200, close to 300 followers on you. I'm sorry, on YouTube. Over a thousand on IG. I don't give a shit about you deleting. Because if you delete me and come back <clears throat> a year from now, I'm still going to be telling the fucking truth. So you might as well delete me again if that's the case. <clears throat> I don't run from the truth because I know what the truth. But not only set me free, but it makes me better. It, just, it makes me look forward to learning something more. You can't grow with falsehood. You grow with truth. I ain't saying. I'm just saying. So, folks. <clears throat> In closing, wake the hell up. Wake the hell up. The black culture is being destroyed because we don't have one to begin with. And people are not going to like that I said that. Because if we did, if we did have a culture, we would own more stuff than we own. We'll be owning our own distribution companies. We will own our own farmlands. Our own hospitals. <clears throat> but we can't do this. We can't do these things because we are our own worst enemy. The Jews ain't joining. They just want to get paid off your ignorance. The white man is not your enemy. He's going to keep himself in office off of your ignorance. The Chinese people aren't the Asians not your enemy. They're just going to continue to make themselves rich with that little mom and pop grocery store they put in your neighborhood. Where it's six, seven dollars for a box of cereal, and you buy it. And I'm not going to tell you everything will get better because it's not. And the reason why it's not going to get better because you don't want to get better. You just want to continue to talk shit about one another. And it's not that I'm sitting here, you might say, Jay, you're doing it right now. No, I'm not doing it right now. You know what I'm doing? I'm not talking shit about you. I'm talking shit about you, but I'm talking to you about you. That's the difference. That's a difference. <clears throat> Wake the fuck up. Four favors I want to ask you guys. Number one, first favor, turn the damn TVs off. Start reading something. People got short attention spans today because of all of this technology. Get your ebook. Find a book that you're going to read, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Think and Become Rich by John Asseroff. Think and Grow Rich at Black Choice by Dr. Dennis Kimbrough. Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. Secrets of the Millionaire Mind. <clears throat> Secrets of the Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Ecker. I can see clearly now. I forgot the author. Wayne Dyer. I'm sorry, by Wayne Dyer. There's a uh, change your mind, change your life.
by myself. Look it up or inbox me. I'll send you the link to, the, to get your copy of my book. Okay. You ain't doing this. Thank you, Brother Eddie Norris. There's so many books I can name. Millionaire Next Door. You got that book sitting right over there. Matter of fact, I'm going to show you something. Hold on. Let me give you some more references. Hold on, folks. All right. Millionaire next door. Okay. <clears throat> How do you kill 11 million people? I'm going to go ahead and tell you the answer to this one. You kill 11 million people by lying to them. Okay. This is by Andy Andrews, one of uh, a great influencer of mine, Andy Andrews. <clears throat> The Myth of Mental Illness, okay? This is a difficult book. You're, you're probably going to need a dictionary on the side, alongside reading this book, so you can understand a lot of the verbiages that's in there. <clears throat> so this is a difficult book to read. The Myth of Mental Illness. Everybody wants to be mentally ill these days. You notice that, folks? Like everybody calling themselves crazy. Everybody is, is like a volunteer victim. As long as they call themselves mentally ill, they are victims. You know what I'm saying? They, it's running the victim Olympics. <clears throat> but pick this up, okay? <clears throat> pick these books up. Unreported truth about COVID-19 and lockdown. This is part one, and this is part two. Okay, there's two parts to this book. All right, this guy's name is Alex Berenson. Okay, pick this up, because <laughs> this is why people was, <clears throat> people was angry with me when I would call all this COVID bullshit. I'm, I'm reading folks. I, I do research. And not only did I read that, but this, this pretty much confirmed everything I've been saying all along anyway. This was nothing but a confirmation book to me, for me. Okay? <clears throat> another book. Pick this up. Because this was another book I purchased because of COVID. Biology for Dummies. Biology, but learn this shit because they still trying to push some COVID bullshit on you. Learn what the immune system is like. Learn about your bodies, folks. Learn this shit. See, that's why I was so good at teaching the immune system. No, I don't have a PhD. I'm not a scientist. I'm a doctor. No, no, no. I read because guess what? The scientists and the PhD on they read too. I read a lot of the same shit. Matter of fact, the person who wrote this. Person who wrote this is a PhD. Let me see. Too much light. Hold on. Let me let me dim the light down some. The person who wrote this is a PhD. Come on, man. Talk to me. Talk to me. I learned from the PhD. I don't just make this shit. I don't pull it out all up my ass. <clears throat> so, and also get the 5G myth. Learn about the 5G myth. See, because what happened is you got people claiming the 5G calls and all that. Man, read, folks. Stop listening to what people are saying all the time. I'm not telling you to always listen to what I'm saying. I'm telling you the truth. Go research what I'm saying. Do your diligence, okay? <clears throat> so that's my first favor. Turn the goddamn TV on. Pick some books up, man. Start reading. <clears throat> At least try to read a book per month. <clears throat> I'm going to be honest with you. I've taken in so much information from me. This is just, this is nothing. I got a whole lot more books than this. <clears throat> a whole lot more books than this. What's up, Brother Gerald? Oh, thank you, man. I, I, <laughs> thank you, brother. Brother Gerald Smith, man, we, we sold cars together at Coon Master. We call it Coon Maga. <laughs> Thank you, Brother Gerald. I really appreciate you, man. Shout out to you, bro. We got to catch up, man. We got definitely got to catch up. <clears throat> so that's the first favor. So turn the damn TV off, man. 
You ain't watching movies. You, you get movie nights. I, I do. I do movie nights. I just went. I seen Black Adam twice. I went to the movie and saw it twice because I want to help them. I want to help them get to a billion. They've earned two hundred and fifty million so far. I want to help them get to a billion. It's a masculine movie, man. It's, it's what movies should be about. I'm not saying <clears throat> don't make shit feminine no more. I'm just saying if it's going to be a feminine movie, let it be a feminine movie. But don't try to take masculinity and turn it into feminine. That's what I don't like. You know, like like what they're doing with Marvel. You've you seen the Incredible Hulk now? Hulk, Incredible Hulk is a bama. We, I'm used to the Hulk roaring, smashing destruction that's the hulk i'm i came up knowing this hulk that they got now man i mean they, they could keep that hulk <clears throat> they can that motherfucker right did you see how they took zeus and made zeus in in, in the, the last thor movie the love and thunder the, the thor movie did you see how they water thor down and how they had zeus in there feminine a feminine zeus come on man that's Look, folks, I, I, this is not homophobic or anything like that. This is this. I'm just saying, if this is something that you want to do, create something new with that. Don't just try to turn something and try to make it something else. Cool people, we, we grew up, we used to certain things. That's why I love Black Adam, because it stayed true to itself. And Henry Cavill is back as Superman. He appeared at the he appeared at the end of Black Adam. They're about to rumble. But they're gonna end up being cool friends though, but they're gonna rumble first. Just like Superman, Batman v Superman is about to be Black Adam v Superman. I can't wait. So I that's DC comics never disappoint me. <clears throat> but back to what I was saying, folks. <clears throat> Turn the TVs off. That's the first favor I asked you. Second, my second favor is I'm about to put that up real quick. My second favor is to like, share, and subscribe. Like the video, share the video, and if you're on YouTube or Twitch, subscribe to the channel. Listen, this video may or may not be for you. If it's not for you, that's fine. I ain't looking for everybody. It's not for everybody. I'm not looking for everybody. I'm only looking for those who get it. <clears throat> so if it wasn't for you, that's fine. But share it anyway. Just like some food that you don't like to eat. No, I don't like it. Give it to somebody that you know what eat it. So share it because you know somebody this video may may help, right? <clears throat> so share it anyway, folks. Third favor I like to ask you is that if you see it on the bottom of the screen, scrolling past, you see all my social media um, connections there on Twitter, J Hunter Lee One on Twitter, J Hunter Lee IG, J Hunter Lee Facebook, J Hunter Lee LinkedIn, and then you see my Cash App. <clears throat> my Cash App. Is dollar sign J Hunter Lee. All I ask for is a donation. You don't have to do it. I'm just asking for a small donation of twenty dollars or less for the podcast. It's not for me, not for my pockets. I'm okay with money. I don't need your money. Just ask you to donate to the podcast. You guys see this backdrop behind me. This backdrop, I paid close to three hundred dollars for it. $80 of that came from y'all donations. So thank you very much for that. In the future, I might need a light. I might need a camera. I might need a laptop. Everything gets old, right? So that's all it's for, $20 or less. I'm not asking for $30, $40, $50. Don't send me that much money because I will reject it and send it back because I didn't ask for that much money. Is that fair? Very fair. So that's all I ask for is a small donation of $20 or less. That's my cash app there on the bottom. It would be greatly appreciated. <clears throat> I got one more favor to ask. My last favor, folks, is to sing like no one can hear you. Dance like no one can see you. Love like you've never been hurt and live like it's heaven on earth. I'm Jay Hunter Lee. I love you. And the world needs you. And it ain't nothing you can do about it. So stop that damn texting and driving. Peace and blessings, folks. I'll see you guys soon.